from Southern California, where it's raining and all the evidence is washing away into Santa Monica Bay, this is Just the Tip Stirs with Melissa Morgan and today's special guest, Carrie Hewitt. If you have a tip on anything, murder, mayhem, the location of your kid sister's diary where she wrote all those lies about your boyfriend, anything, tell us about it by sending an email to jttipsters at gmail.com. You just might hear Melissa talk about your tip on the podcast. And now, here's your host. She knows what you did last summer, Melissa Morgan. Ah, more cowbell. I really don't know what you did last summer. I don't really know anything. Except more cowbell. I need that. Welcome to Just the Tip Stirs. This is the first edition of our podcast with a guest. And I could not be more happy that Carrie Hewitt is joining us on this beautiful rainy day because it never rains in California. I remember that was a song and it was a lie. And she, we are really grateful that she is here because she is a fascinating, wonderful creature. Shucks. I feel really blessed. Ah, oh, shucks. And she's very modest. I feel very blessed that she is here. So those of you that know the podcast is about murder, mayhem, yoga, jam recipes, um, Carrie probably is great at all of that, but a little background as to how we met, which we uh, discussed earlier today as being very fortuitous, I think. So Carrie is a Renaissance woman who has a million different talents and gifts, and they keep being revealed to me um, the more, the longer I, I know her, the more time we spend together. She made her own sourdough bread. I don't even want to know how it happened. Don't care. But it took a long time, a lot of work, and she fucking did it. And that's just like, that's pretty low on the bar of all the things she does. Um, I, I will tell you, uh, there are some annoying things about Carrie. The fact that I can't mention a fucking thing that she doesn't know about. So I'm like, hey, did you hear? And she's like, oh, yeah, not only did I hear, I invented that. <laughs> and I'm like, you bitch. She knows everything. She There's probably, I sometimes wish this was a call-in show. Because there's probably nothing you could call in and, and test her on that she doesn't know something about. But the way me, we met was one of those beautiful stories in my mind. Um, I had a new selfie stick and was delighted to put my rose gold iPhone on it and take it out for a, a spin. And took it to what I thought was a beautiful overlook canyon. There are some power lines, but I thought I could still kind of get around that and get some beautiful pictures. And what I walked into was a group of people, which I thought were doing the same thing I was doing, <laughs> uh, taking pictures of a canyon. And then I saw a dog and thought maybe someone's walking their dog. And then the lovely Carrie approaches me and says, hey, you're like, hi, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, I'm taking some pictures because I'm, you know, kind of uh, that person. And she's like, you know, there's a, quietly she says to me, there's a mother who's grieving. And you don't want to be a part of that. And I looked at her face and saw pain and compassion in her face and thought, I don't know what's happening here, but I got to get the fuck out. So I got my car and peeled out. Little did I know, it was a site where a woman's daughter had been dumped. We still don't know all of the details, whether it was at her own hand, an accidental overdose, someone else took her life. We don't know. But this is where I met Carrie. And then I see on Facebook, on social media, her name. And it comes up quite a bit in something that's fascinating to me, which is a local case of a missing man. And I send her a message on Facebook and say, look, I have a lot of time. I would love to do anything. And I don't even know how she figured it out. But she said, hey, do you drive a black SUV? <laughs> and I was like, yes, I do are you stalking me? And she's like, no, but I think I met you. And I was like, are you shitting me? And we had met. This was at a midnight, one o'clock in the yes. morning, because everything was so chaotic, because we were finishing up um, with the Maricela Garcia yep. discovery and had moved on to another case. And I wanted to be a part of the case. The case we're talking about is a missing man in our uh, area named William Sarazon. And Carrie has been a part of the search effort for him from the beginning. And she beautifully 
made herself available to Will's wife, Linda, his siblings. It is um, a heartbreaking and yet beautiful story. And Carrie is um, leading the charge to try to get this case solved. So I don't know if you want to talk about the case. Do you want me to ask you questions about the case? Well, I think it's important to at least give a little bit of backstory, which is uh, I've always believed in volunteering within the community and Will and Linda Searson's home is right down the street from our old home. And uh, knowing that Will Searson was an employee at Magic Mountain and my daughter worked at Magic Mountain and knew exactly who he was. Um, and knowing that there was this woman at home, uh, re I had no idea what I was walking into, but I felt so much empathy and so much compassion for this woman that I wanted to insulate her. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm good at finding people. I, I find people all the time. Yes, had, you are. I had just found somebody and it was a great successful ending. And, uh, and so I thought, you know, I've got a little bit of time. I know the community. We've lived here for, you know, over a decade. And so I thought maybe I could offer her some assistance. Did you have any idea what you were walking into? Not a tiny little <laughs> inkling of what yeah. I was getting myself into. That's what I kind of figured. I think it's a big, deep crevasse. And you um, traverse it really well, like a um, experienced uh, spelunker. You get down and dirty. And I can say that with uh, full confidence because I've been with you and I won't I won't get dirty but you're but you're getting dirty <laughs> I have uh yeah I've, I've landed in quicksand up to my thighs <laughs> looking looking for will so yes. yeah down and dirty is is probably pretty a good accurate. description so for anyone who doesn't know about the case it's a local case and we live in an area that is um I I affectionately call it Mayberry and I know it's not exactly Mayberry but it's um people don't get dead that often and or go missing that often and when they do there's typically a reason why and one of the things I admired so much about Carrie is that I could sit back and look at the story and be horrified and want to do something to help but not even know where to start and Carrie just walked right in and said what can I do and here's something I can do and why don't we try this and came up with ideas and thought outside the box and did more than I would imagine seasoned private investigators or definitely more than um, law enforcement has time to do. They don't have the time and resources, and Carrie is a fantastic resource. Uh, the reason this case really um, resonated with me is that uh, last January 26th, almost a year now, which is I think both of us are sitting here with our hearts broken because we don't know where Will is. Um, Linda, his wife, is living my nightmare. Uh, she calls Will at 4.30ish in the afternoon and says, I'm working an hour of overtime. And he is watching golf and making chicken for dinner and says he would hold off making the potatoes until later because she's going to be a little late. She calls him later around 6.30 and says, I'm heading home. And he doesn't answer her. And gets home at 7.30ish. The chicken's on the stove. Well, let me go back because I... Sure. Here's, here's what the disconnect is for some people when, when questions pop up. Absolutely. So she, Will and Linda spoke every day on her lunch break. So when she was at work at Universal, she would walk outdoors and feed the ducks and talk on her cell phone to her husband if he was at home. And so she'd spoken to him at lunchtime that day, and he was excited because Tiger Woods was coming, uh, not because he was a huge Tiger Woods fan either, from what I understand, but, you know. The Wanted to see him fail. The, right, the, the train wreck <laughs> that be. Uh, and so he was excited about that. But there was no mention of guests. There was no mention of any other plans. But she did call when she found out that there was going to be maybe an extra hour of overtime. She did call him around 4 and let him know that uh, she wasn't going to be home, you know, at 5 or 6 because she was going to take that overtime. She called at 6 before she left the office um, on, a, on a Thursday evening, much like the weather today. It was, it was icky and cloudy mm -hmm. and gloomy. Um, and it wasn't unusual for her to work an hour of overtime here or there. Um, so when she arrived home at seven, uh, he was not, he was not in the house. The front door was unlocked. The front door was unlocked. The, the front, kitchen's on the stove. The, the chicken was on the stove. The front I mean, door was, the, chicken's on the, stove. The, the front door was unlocked. Uh, but the house was dark. There weren't any lights on. Um, his keys, wallet. And, and I don't think that she discovered that all of his belongings were there 
until well after. She just figured, you know, he's got this great dog that uh, that worships him. He's well known in the neighborhood. Any neighbor, you know, if a water heater had broken, he would have walked over and helped the neighbor with a water heater. He just wasn't at home. So she was a little frustrated that uh, that she had walked in. She told him a hundred times, we don't live in Mayberry. You have to lock the front door. <laughs> Even though I say it's Mayberry. But yeah, that's smart. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so she got home to a dark, unlocked house. The dog was in the house. And, uh, and she didn't get panicky for a little bit, but when she didn't find him in the neighborhood. So at some point, yeah, you said she had... She had um walked up and down the street looking and asked the neighbors, hey, have you seen Will? Correct. So at some point she must figure out that his his phone is there, his wallet, his keys, his jacket, and his phone, because she at one point uses the phone, his phone, to uh, contact friends and family. Hey, have you seen him? Which is, I think, a fascinating thing that she uses his phone. His truck's out front. It's like It's like he evaporated. Right. I believe that she called his cell phone and recognized okay. that his cell phone was in, the, in house the house okay. and went and retrieved it. Okay. And uh, that's probably when she saw the call log and, and contacted the relative that was in the in the call log. And, and yeah, probably others who, you know, just to find out where he is. Right. So not to uh, cast aspersions on law enforcement, but the case has been handled pretty badly from minute one, I think. Um, a complaint was filed with the sheriff's department because of the initial contact that went so badly. And when, um, the details are known, it's, it's, um, it's troubling that someone would, uh, I wouldn't want to say not take their job seriously, but not be trained enough on their job to know what to look for, how to look. And basically a cursor research and said, yeah, you're right. He's not here. So in Los Angeles County, to, to shed some light on this, in Los Angeles County, uh, probably in many places, but in Los Angeles County especially, if you are an adult and you decide that you don't want your life anymore, you have the right to walk away from your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. And so if you want to start fresh in Costa Rica, that's on you. That's yeah, up to you. Uh, if you're a child, if you are under 18 years old and you make contact with our local sheriff's department. Uh, and our local Santa Clarita Sheriff's Department is extremely diligent. Been, they've been very, very successful, wildly successful about tracking down missing children. However, if you're a missing adult, your case is taken by a field deputy here, and then it's transferred down to Los Angeles County uh, Homicide Missing Persons. And they're down, I want it's Monterey Park or Newberry Park, but okay. it is not anywhere near here. Not here, near and, here. And those it's detectives... Monterey Park. Monterey Park. So those detectives... Uh, service a, a wide field, all of Los Angeles County. There's only one of those divisions, and they've got over 500 homicide cases a year active that they're responsible for. I'm quite sure of that. And I know your success with finding missing um, endangered children. I hate to call them children because a lot of times they're uh, in their late teens, but they're not considered adults yet. And I know your success in finding missing people that are alive. It's a difficult thing when you don't know what's happening what, happening with a missing adult. And he is an adult. He's not a, a blonde 24-year-old model who uh, went out with a photographer into the desert and didn't come back. He's a 58-year-old man. No, he's a happily married right. man who loves his very comfortable life yeah. with his adorable, adoring wife. Married 28 years. They are each other's everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to imagine the man that would pick flowers for his wife as he was leaving work to take home to her, hmm. uh, just walking away from his life. Right. But but at, at that, even his dog is at home with his wife and he adores his dog. Mm, I'm a dog lover, so maybe he loves his dog just as much. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, we all know you do, <laughs> but yeah. But uh, that he would... He, to my knowledge, he would never have just walked away from his life, his wife and his dog and his comfortable home and his things. Right. And why would he leave with no identification? He's not um, some tech savvy guy who can come up with a new ID, ID online and, like you say, live in Costa Rica under the, under the radar. That's just not him. It's not. Not at all. Set one foot into his garage. He's the ultimate. <laughs> he's the ultimate putterer. Yeah. Uh, he liked his things, and I. 
I don't see him leaving the comfort of, of that life and walking away. So things started smelling funny. And I didn't From know. From the beginning. I didn't know any of that. No, you you, know? I think you have the best sniffer of anyone involved in this case uh, because you take the time to realize what you're trying to sniff. He's got a pretty amazing family. He's got who siblings. Who love him desperately. It is very clear. He's got siblings who um, I'm positive miss him every day, but the gaping hole that is sitting there, uh, you know, Linda, Linda holds that torch um, in ways that, you know, I, I don't know that I could endure a year of this without just losing my mind. And, and Linda has done that, but his family and Linda, yeah, they've, they've really suffered at all of this. Well, the one that um, probably reeled me in was Andrea, his sister. Uh, about a week after he was missing, um, the uh, detective, the lead detective on this case, and it's still an active investigation, so there's only things, so many things we're, we're able to say were limited. Correct. And what we, you know, can and can't say. So they had a press conference, an 18-minute press conference, um, asking for help. And Linda Sarazan became so overcome that her sister had to kind of pull her away from the mic and comfort her. And Will's sister, Andrea, stepped up and said, you know, my uh, my brother Will and I speak on the phone every Sunday. She lives a couple of hours um, east of us. And uh, I haven't talked to my to my brother Will. I missed our Sunday conversation. Um, he is a collector of Coke memorabilia. He works at the gift shop at Magic Mountain. And more about that later during um, a candlelight vigil for his birthday. We can discuss that. So... She's the one that I was like, I, I have to get involved. This isn't just a guy who walked away. This isn't, um, this is, this is a person who needs to come home. This is a person who needs to come home, who is loved. And I know everyone who is missing for the most part is loved and missed, but this one, um, really resonated because I know that if I came home and Mark, uh, was not here and his items were here, you would hear me, uh, screaming, in Alaska. I don't imagine there would be a window left in your home. That's true. That is true. I'd probably break them all. You're exactly right. And I don't, I can't even hit a high C, but I would Pavarotti the windows out with my screams. I am, I'm pretty sure of that. So let's go back to you. You meet Linda, you ask some questions, you offer an ear and tell me how, how this goes. Well, uh, I had just been working on a missing persons case for a young lady here in Santa Clarita who had walked away from her life. Uh, she was very young. Um, she deals with some mental health issues, and her family was very, very worried about her. And we spent more than a month combing all sorts of icky places to find <laughs> her. And just as I was coming up on the end of finding Chelsea, uh, I get a message from a community member who says, I've been, I've hit the pavement. I've been out in all of these places. Uh, she, uh, he, he's nowhere to be found. And it just feels like the sheriff's department isn't doing anything and we've got to do something. And I sent him a message back and said, you have got great intentions and I've got my hands very full and I've just neglected my family. I don't charge to do any of this. Uh, yeah. It's because I'm okay at finding people. No, you're great at it. And I feel like I can. Uh, if that were my child, if that were my husband, if that were me, I would want somebody out there uh, turning over every every leaf, which you do. And so I let it go at, gosh, gee, I hadn't paid much attention to the case at all because I was really exhausted. In, yeah. Well, and I had, yeah, I'd spent so much time away from my family. I had my own things going on. But I sat down to watch. I don't remember what it was. I actually, I do. I sat down to watch Channel 4 News because one of the cameramen I had just run into at the courthouse, it had to do uh, with another current event. It wasn't a missing person, but there was a current event coming up, a lawsuit or something that was that was going on uh, with the SoCal gas thing. And I and I wanted to watch this cameraman. He sent me a text message and said, hey, check it out. It's, it's coming up. The, the story's coming up. And I tuned in to watch that. And before I could get to the SoCal gas press conference there was breaking news about Will Searson's disappearance. And the camera f 
flashed on their home, and I realized that this was a shortcut street. Cuatro Milpas, where the Searsons live, is a shortcut street uh, when you're stuck in traffic on Bouquet Canyon. <laughs> right. In rush hour traffic, and I recognized the neighborhood, and I stopped. Uh, my girlfriend and I froze the frame, and then we watched the newscast two or three or a dozen times obsessively, trying to figure out what it was that was going on. And it brought me back to the original community member who had sent me this message. I opened the message back up and I read it a little more deliberately and said, uh, I sent him a message back and said, I'll meet you tomorrow in, in this parking lot at this location and let's compare notes and see. Most of my investigating when I do investigate has to do with tracking down uh, where you've been online, who your friends are, somebody who may have liked your last post. <laughs> right. Because everybody can be an internet sleuth. Right. I'm not a professional. I'm not licensed. I just am good at finding people. So I I meet with this community member, and he retraces his steps with me, and they're very thorough, but they're a little unwieldy, and I explain to him that I think what we're looking for is the last person who did have contact with him. There was a suspicion. There was a vehicle seen pulling out of the driveway. Let's figure that person out. And maybe that'll take us to wherever Bill Searson is. Maybe he took him to the airport. Maybe, um, who knows? Maybe they're into um, hot yoga and he's down at the studio, you know, down the... <laughs> and he I, passed out. Uh, right. I, but in any case, I just wanted to see who the family member was and what their connection was and what they were about because that would have helped us. That would have given us some clues, I, you know, if you're going to sniff around... We ended up spending a few hours together, and I realized that the magnitude of this was probably far bigger than us, and it, we probably needed to go speak with his wife. Um, but she's not online. There's they an, are a, an amazing couple. Uh, didn't Will, uh, doesn't he have a flip phone? Like, I mean, like oh, literally an old school. Absolutely. Like an army field phone from 1947. Definitely so not. They have yeah. no like social media presence. Correct. It's not that they're hiding. They're just, that's not their thing. At at their age, they had a lot of things in their life that made them happy. I don't think that there was any need for a filler. So right. <laughs> because I couldn't find her to approach her or find a family member to approach them because I'm, I'm, I try, to, I try to be very considerate you about are. people's space and she's in the middle of a crisis and I didn't want to barge in. You absolutely are. So I really felt like I had no other choice but to knock on the door and all I did, the first thing out of my mouth was, I'm so sorry that you're going through all of this. I'm part of the community. We'd like to help if we can. But because we couldn't reach you online, here I am. I, I'm sorry if I'm invading your space. We'll go if you want us to. And she said, I, I can't afford to pay you. And I said, we, I, we don't want you to pay, but we'll help. I will, you know, we'll do what we can. Having no and idea. Boy, did you. Having no idea. Boy, do you. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't know I was going to speak in front of city council and uh, I didn't know that I was going to be splashed across, you know, news publications with search dogs. I've learned an awful lot through this case. Yeah, you, you have a very um, wonderful way of stepping out of the limelight. Anything I saw online or in a publication may have mentioned your name, but you always put somebody else in front of a camera. Like, I remember the woman in the search dog. I remember that picture. Um, I remember other pictures, not uh, pictures of a group of people getting together and wearing green shirts because it's Will's favorite color. And looking, and you were not, you were mentioned. That's the only reason I knew to contact you on Facebook is because you were mentioned in articles. I had no idea what you look like. I didn't know, you know, anything about you. And honestly, from your name, I thought you were like a... Um, 32 year old blonde person who wore a tutu. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, that's going to stick with me. So, <laughs> okay. All but right. listen, why don't, I mean, part of this, I mean, the big, the big part of your drive, Carrie, isn't it true that is, is the, is the way that the, uh, the sheriff's department has investigated this, it, which is very frustrating. Am I, am I, isn't that part of this? The first interaction I had with Linda Sears on at her door um, she looked like she was going to shatter, which is which is odd now that I know Linda. Uh, she may be tiny, but she definitely is mighty. She's a pretty sturdy woman. She's very bright. Um, she's she's not at all what her appearance would would tell you. 
Uh, but one of the first things she said to me was, they came, I filed a missing persons report because I don't, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. I want to make sure that the authorities have been contacted and they can do their job. I wasn't at her door to be an investigator. I was just going to, you know. How can I help? Right. So well, we have resources. We can get some people together. We can go look at the, you know, back of Central Park. We can, you know, go down to the grocery store and see if, you know, he's hanging out down there, you know. Uh, but she said to me, they came and started to take a report at 10 or so at night and then the deputy left for a call and came back about an hour later and sort of shined her flashlight through the house, but then told me, well, he's in the system. If he turns up, we'll call you. And oh, that, thanks. And that's what they left this woman with. Uh, so now we're talking 11 or 12 at night, and her husband's nowhere to be found. And in her mind, he's had a heart attack or right. bumped his head. Can't and, be. Yeah, he has no way to contact anyone. Everything that he owns that says who he is. Yeah. Right. And we're not in Minnesota by any stretch of the imagination, but it's the end of January and it's after dark. And you know, he's not a big strapping lumberman. He's, you know, five, eight and, and a pretty slender guy. And him being out overnight in the cold is not without okay. his jacket. Horrifying. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for at this point, according to Linda, you know, the family members have all rallied. Except for a couple, and we're looking for uh, someone who's maybe injured. Yeah, man down. Let's let's get him to the hospital. Maybe amnesia, he, something. Yeah. So that's how that started. Um, the sheriff's department did not become more vigorously involved until sunrise, and there were family members in the home, and they had noticed um, some evidence that had been left behind, and thought, uh, you know, it's. It could just be coincidental, but he's not home yet. Nobody's doing anything. Let's go. We need to go shake our fists. We need to go pound on the counter, and the sheriff's Which department is needs to come in. And the saddest thing I've ever heard, that you have to pound on the counter at the sheriff's department and say, look, this is what's happening. Right. So the gut punch for me is that in the period of time when Will had gone missing, uh, Chelsea, 23 and beautiful, uh, had also gone missing. Um, and another gentleman from San Diego County had, had driven through here and also gone missing. Uh, and the sheriff's department really engaged for the gentleman from San Diego, but they weren't using the resources. It, it was noticeable. They weren't using any resources to locate Will. And somebody pulled me to the side and said, well, he's not young and handsome uh -huh. and beautiful. And uh, some, you know... It's just not a priority. Uh, maybe his picture's not as pretty to put up on the screen, but he's a beautiful man. If you talk to Linda and Andrea and all the rest of Will's family, he's a beautiful man. Well, let's talk about the beautiful man before we go back to all of the things you have done to try and find him. Um, on his birthday in May, what would have been his 59th birthday, you organized a candlelight vigil at the place where he works, which is Six Flags Magic Mountain in Santa Clarita and Valencia or Stevenson Ranch. And like um, maybe 100 people show up and uh, quite a few news crews. And you put me in charge of signing people in. And it was an honor. And people that signed in all had something wonderful to say about Will. And the thing... <laughs> You can't cry because I'll cry too. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the thing that got to me was two adults who were obviously uh, diminished in a mental capability way were signing in with their mom who was older and she made sure they signed in and you could read their names and it was legible. And... The male and female both said, Will is my friend. And the mom, when the, I call them kids, but they were adults, when they were out of earshot, the mom said quietly to me, Will was so good to my special needs kids and treated them like they were everyone else. And they knew that and appreciated that and love him for it. And if that doesn't let you know, 
who he is and why it's an important thing to bring him home, I don't know what else can let you know who he is. So here's a guy who, you know, loves his life, doesn't ask a lot, doesn't demand a lot, isn't striving to be something different than he is. He's just himself. And in your words, nobody gets to take that away. So I am uh, not a person who likes to go outside. <laughs> I don't like the out of doors. It's beautiful when I can see it through a window. But you and the group of people that you organized have looked, um, as you have said, under every rock in Santa Clarita. I went with you a couple of times and it was... <laughs> It was horribly uncomfortable for me because I don't like the out of doors, <laughs> but you forced me out of doors and not in a bad way. Not like you took a gun or anything. I went sort of willingly. You definitely uh, <laughs> left your comfort zone. <laughs> that is true. Uh, that's real true. Um, and learned more and found out more about when you're looking for someone, you explained um, weather conditions that could make things difficult. You explained the difference between what um, an animal bone looks like uh, as opposed to a human bone, because every bone I would find, I would be like, oh, is this, you know, someone who's missing or is this? No, it's probably a goat. Shut up. Um, yeah, a, go a goat mandible. Put the, put the goat femur down, <laughs> Melissa. Yeah, right. Stop it. Stop sniffing the goat femur. Um, yeah, it was, it is still um, an amazing education for me. You, every question I asked, you had an answer for, and not in a flippant way, in a way that you had thought of it already. You had investigated it already. You had spoken to other people about it. If it was something you couldn't do, you found someone who could do it and get it done. You, um, you and the group you've put together, probably, I don't know if you had to estimate, what would you say, walk 100 square miles through? <laughs> so Santa Clarita is... Between 60 and 70 square miles. Okay. Um, that's not including the outlying canyon areas, right. which we focused in quite a bit. Yes, you did. Uh, and I and I need to say this because I, I sort of, no, not sort of, I absolutely omitted this and not on purpose. But um, the way that this case was handled initially by the local station is the way that any missing adult person case would have been handled. They would take an intake and then go. The, the problem was the evidence that was overlooked that evening. However, uh, the detectives who are responsible for Will's case um, were extremely kind and extremely open and extremely helpful as much as they could be procedurally without sullying the case okay because i'm only a citizen i'm right. not a licensed private investigator right i'm not even certified search and rescue however the insight that i've gotten from professionals in the search and rescue community uh there are search and rescue uh, volunteers that came from miles and miles and miles away and yeah. and spent days and blew all of the gas in their, you know, Jeeps and trucks and friends of Will's from high school who heard that he was missing that came out. Uh, I've had coroners, uh, coroner investigators, forensic pathologists, forensic anthropologists, all of the information that I've ever been able to share with anybody is only out of my own curiosity right. and my willingness to pick up a phone and harass somebody into talking to me and telling me, you know, God forbid the worst thing happened. God forbid Will um, passed away somewhere out in the elements. What What is it that we're looking for? Exactly. Because I felt so... I can't... Badly isn't the right word. I felt so strongly that Linda deserved answers and Will deserved to be home. Yes. Everybody who's taken part in this search. And let me tell you, hundreds of people in this community yes. and outlying communities and Will's own family, except for two, uh, have all been engaged in helping with information it's it's been a lot of phone calls and in-person communication but there's a very small core group of people who have been willing to wade through the darkest ickiest most disgusting morbid information because all we really want to do is bring will home to linda yeah. and to his family 
you, you know, you explained things to me that I'd often wondered about in missing person case, missing persons cases. And it was, it's still all fascinating. And I have just scratched the surface, but the links that you went to, the connections you have, the people you called in favors, you, you know, the, the woman with the, um, with the search dog, um, the friend with the drone. Um, I mean, not just people with boots on the ground, which there were a lot of those, but you utilized many things that if law enforcement agencies had the resources they would do, it's the things that help solve cases and you figured them out on your own and you found people who would do the, you know, do it for you or do it for Will and Linda or when you explained, I mean, um, I've tried to explain you to other people. And I, one of the things I think that makes you so fantastic at, at being a finder, and that's what you are really is a finder of, of everything <laughs> lost, lost children, lost puppies, lost souls. I think you're a finder. Um, you can put, uh, a blue, uh, Ivanka Trump dress on you and you look like Jackie O and you can put a pair of bedazzled jeans on you and you look like you could fit into the most interesting biker bar ever. So you, uh, move seamlessly in different crowds. And I think that's what makes you the amazing sponge that you are for information. I think you have a, a way that people open up to you and tell you things they may not tell other people. I think you have, um, you, you engender that sort of, um, trust, but you also ask the right questions. You, you ask to the point, concise, you know, pointed questions to get the, to the answer the fastest way, which I think is a real, um, a real talent, a real gift. So, um, we can always come back to this, but like finding Chelsea, I have been with you when you've gotten phone calls from people in like snake pits in Silmar. <laughs> and, uh, we, yeah, what I'll tell you, um, <laughs> I'm very fortunate to have a, a very well, I have a very small core group and it takes one idea and I'm open-minded enough that I will just, sure, why not? Um, but there have been times where I put myself in real danger and didn't realize until I walked away that, uh, wow, that could have cost me uh, a lot, a lot. And it has. And I bet your guardian angel is wringing her hands. Quite possibly <laughs> more often than not. Uh, somebody told me at one point when I was searching for somebody that we could go in and look for this person but that I needed to know that the home that I would be entering, I would have to get permission from the head of uh, a group, a dark <laughs> seedy group from the underworld, and that I should just be forewarned that people had been burned alive in this home. Okay. And uh, and that's when I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get in my cozy car and I'll see you. <laughs> bye bye. And I thought to myself, could we? Can we just message them on Facebook and ask <laughs> if they've seen her? Because this doesn't sound fun to me. <laughs> it quit being fun. But I'll tell you, when you see the determination in a mother or father or a wife or, or sibling's eyes, when somebody loves somebody and they're worried for them, you just think, gosh, what if that was, what if that was Melissa? I would, want, I would turn everything over. I would upend the universe to go find her. And, and I know that. I know you would. I feel like you're like a fireman. And they, they always say they're running toward danger and everyone's running out. I can see you walking into the house of the uh, CD group where people have been burned alive and be like, hey, have you seen this girl? I can see you doing it. Uh, let's, let's be honest here, though. I do know my limitations. And there are far bigger, badder, better people in this universe than me that could go in and deal with that. Well, then you would find them and know them and utilize them absolutely absolutely but i'm very fortunate to have like i said a, a tight group of people and we love each other and look out for each other and we were all brought together by somebody's disappearance by the loss of something and really for me because i am not law enforcement it's easier for me to walk in in my uh, miss me jeans with my stomper <laughs> boots and my baseball hat mm -hmm. always the baseball hat and ponytail it's far easier for me to walk in and say, hey, I, I, I want nothing from you. If, if you want to continue uh, doing whatever that is, um, <laughs> go ahead. 
I'm not taking you to jail. I just need to find this person. Right. I'm not going to drag anybody out of anywhere. I'm not handing you over to law enforcement. Trust me, if you're doing something illegal in this community, they already know. They already I don't know. need to hand yeah. you over to anybody. Yeah, and that's not your, yeah. Not my deal. Let's just get, you know, let's accomplish the mission here, uh, which is disarming and has afforded us a, a lot of uh, leniency in some of well, it's the... because it's truthful. Absolutely. And even it doesn't matter what sort of weird CD shit you do, you can recognize the truth and you know that you're not there, you know, to arrest them. So being with you and uh, coming across a group of young men, and I am mystified, <laughs> constantly scratching my head like, I don't understand what the fuck three grown ass uh, men, I mean, young. They were just college age Yeah, kids. yeah. Young, young men, but uh, adults, uh, sort of, um, hanging out in trees and smoking pot, which I didn't know that's what they were doing until they totally trusted you and were like, oh, I'll just be honest, we're here smoking pot. So... Three young men, odd, oddly well dressed, hanging from trees like crazed zoo monkeys. Didn't get it. Don't know. It's like a weird. I don't get it. High as a kite. Pro, you know what? I'm so dense. I'm sure they thought, oh look, it's the narc. And so I kind of tried to stay back, but I wanted to listen, and I and I did, and I hear what you're saying and what you say to them, and they know some of the family members involved and they have some insight and some well, information. Not at, the outset. at the outset, they knew no. nothing. No, yeah, yeah. we were, t- no, we just came up to have some recreation time in the trees and commute with nature. That's all <laughs> it was initially. <laughs> well, yes. And this large joint is a very natural healing herb that, uh, yeah. So they're commuting with nature. And, and then finally, after, after a short conversation with you, uh, yeah, we'll just be honest. We come up here to smoke pot, which I am always stunned by. Cause I'm thinking, if I'm a pothead, why don't I stay home and smoke pot? Why do I need to go someplace? Where your refrigerator is and your uh, TV right. and your I don't get it. Yeah, why, in your bathroom. and Why do you need to? I mean, and these boys had nicely dressed and real nice cars. Very nice cars. Real nice cars. So I'm like, huh. So you get more information out of them than I would have imagined anyone could. So with just that one interaction, my question to you is, why are you not a private eye? I feel like you would be a zillionaire and have too many cases on your desk that you couldn't solve because everyone would come to you. Because I, I'll be honest with you, if um, one of my fingernails goes missing, I'm calling you because I'm qu- pretty sure you'll find it. I'll, I'll track it down. I'll get I, the job done. I know you will. So why are you not a private eye? You know, I didn't ever set out to be a finder. No, ever. I know, but it's it's obviously a gift. How many times do you need to be knocked on the head? Uh, I'll be really <laughs> honest with you. This particular case, this case has cost me a lot. It, yes. It has cost... Not my, just financially. It has cost my family a lot. Yes. And, uh, you know, this, this one's going to smart for a little while. Uh, not to say that I wouldn't help find anybody ever again, I'll be really honest with you, uh, a week ago, tomorrow, a week ago tomorrow, a 19-year-old college student from Orange County named Blaze Bernstein oh, yeah. went missing, and his family is desperate for information, and, you know, I, I've learned enough in finding that I can't not tell them, hey, you need to employ search dogs 24-7 because they're the ones who stepped in with Will, and... They dropped everything they were doing. They were supremely professional and very attentive. And oh yeah, your your search dog woman is is OC is Orange County. Uh, well, she's she's all or over Torrance Southern. Yeah, she's all over Los Angeles County. But search dogs twenty four seven. That that group, they're a uh, professional group, but they're not Los Angeles County's dogs. They're their own dogs. Right. And uh, one of my searchers who had been by my side in San Francisco Canyon for um, a month straight. We taped off grids. He was super, super diligent. Great guy. Had to go to L.A. for a a meeting of some sort and came back up and handed me this card, business card. And on the back of it was scrawled this phone number. Call these people. They've got dogs. And I had no idea what it was. And I pulled over with another searcher and threw my feet up on the dashboard and made a call, and Search Dogs 24-7 came out, and I'm not pitching them because they don't make any money. They're a volunteer group. They're a nonprofit. Wow. They're so good at what they do. Uh, they're the ones who have come out and helped 
search for Will. And these dogs can search months and months after the fact. Right. Uh, ideally, it would be immediately after the fact. But they don't reach out to families. They don't reach out they, to loved ones. You have ones. to reach out to them. You've got to reach okay. out to them. And most people don't know that you can do exactly. that. Exactly. But when your 19-year-old goes missing and homicide is in L.A. and you're an hour and a half away, if there's no traffic, you can call these people and you can um, ask them to help. They'll work with the authorities. Uh, they don't step on toes. But again, very professional uh, some of the things that I have learned in all of my searching have come from just communication because they all have the same heart that I do. They want to help right. families reunite. They want to bring loved ones back. They want that closure. Why wouldn't I be a paid investigator? I, I really wasn't ever counting on <laughs> spending a year looking for a man who was, right. who was very clearly taken from his home. So we'll just put that out there. Now, some... now let's talk about that for a second because one thing you haven't mentioned is that in the Will Serzon case, there are suspects. It's an active investigation, producer Mark. <laughs> yes, I understand that, but there, but there have been things about it uh, in the public. There have been a lot of things about it in the public, including, but not limited to, Chris Hansen's um, Crime Watch Daily. Um, Which is actually great coverage of this case. And it if was. Any, if anybody out there doesn't know about Will Serzon's disappearance, you can go online and look for... Will Sears on Crime Watch Daily, and there's a there's a great segment. C i e r z a n. Correct, yes, and that will that will kind of get, fill you in on why one of the reasons why Carrie and Melissa and all the people that have been helping have been out there looking so hard um, because they they really need to find a body, isn't that right, Carrie? We need to find a missing person. Right. My um my my position is. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't get a lot into my own religion, my own faith or beliefs. But my position from the very onset of this was to insulate Linda, who was struggling, whose husband had gone missing. Uh, my goal was to bring Will home to his wife. Uh, you know, I don't know what shape that's going to be. I don't right. know what form that's going to be in. My heart breaks every day that she's got to go back to sleep without her husband, without her will, her, her lifelong companion, 29 years of marriage and Christmas just passed. And I haven't had the heart to sit in their home and, and talk to Linda about updates because I've not got any updates and it, you know, it, people really don't just vanish. No, they don't. Of course not. That's, What's so frustrating about this? And, you know, I, it, there's a lot about this case that's frustrating. So just um, in, in case we I just want, don't want to forget this. Is there a place or a phone number or an email address? We, obviously, people can write to jttipsters at gmail.com. But is there a, a kind of a clearinghouse for information on this case? There is not a centralized clearinghouse. Uh, we've made a Facebook page, which is find... Oh, I forgot the name of our it's, Facebook page. It's, it's missing. It's missing Will Searson. It's on Facebook. So if you Google, <laughs> I don't have the page in front of me. Hang on. I'll, I'll have to find it. I'll find uh, it. You keep talking. Uh, I'll find it. Also, uh, Detective Ralph Hernandez with Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department Homicide Division. If you contact Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and ask for their Homicide Missing Persons Division, they'll give you a phone number. Detective Ralph Hernandez is the lead detective on this case and I'm positive that he would welcome any tips I also want to mention that there is a sizable reward uh, for any there information two different anonymous donors at this point to put together one pretty good uh, for any sort of information on the arrest or conviction of anyone who may have been involved in Will's disappearance the web the Facebook page is called missing colon William Sears on and that's all you need to type in, and it'll pull up the rest of it. If you just type in missing, colon, William Searzan, C-I-E-R-Z-A-N, and it, the Facebook page will come up. Perfect. And this is the reason why, one of the reasons why I started this podcast. In case people are reticent to call law enforcement or a tip line that they think might be bugged or or tapped or wired or I, I, I don't even know how I'm using the right words because I'm a tech tart. But you can email us at jttipsters at gmail.com. If you have 
a tip on Will, anyone involved in this case. If you know anything, if you have a really shitty jam recipe, send that too. That's fine. Uh, I, I do want to put out, uh, we campaigned with the city for uh, an increase from a $5,000 reward to a $10,000 reward. That reward was doubled by an anonymous donor to $20,000. Uh, nobody who is actively searching for Will, who's part of my group, nobody, uh, we've all made a pact, uh, it's in writing, we have all agreed that uh, reward money, uh, if any reward money ever comes forward for the location of Will or information leading to the conviction of his captor, his abductor, uh, none of us are, are making any financial means. It would all go directly yeah. to Linda. You, yeah, you made that very clear from day one when I met you. Any reward money is going to Linda to help defray her living expenses, her costs of not having her husband, what she's had to go through. If you are someone who... um doesn't know the family um, and you need 20 grand and you're um, you don't mind being a, a snitch you'll get the 20 grand absolutely. call it anyway absolutely what Carrie's and talking about is us involved in the search we're not all of us have we know that 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 any reward money that's ever distributed is going to Linda but that doesn't include anyone who's listening to this you can feel free to collect all of it. That reward money is is there for the taking. Uh, it requires a tip that leads to um, the arrest and conviction. You know, let's just hit the elephant in the room. Will's Will's nephew, uh, his twenty year old nephew, was at uh, Will and Linda Searson's home the day that Will went missing. His forerunner, or a forerunner resembling his forerunner, was seen backing up into the driveway for a very short period of time. And there were some conflicting stories about when he was there and why he was there and where he went afterwards. And so there's the elephant in the room. Uh, there are a lot of people in this community who do know Will's nephew. Uh, he's been named on Crime Watch Daily. They attempted Absolutely. to interview. They've attempted the to only person of interest. Let's right. just say that it's Will's Will's brother's son. Uh, Which is even more heartbreaking. It is absolutely because Will and Linda have always looked at their nephew Daniel like like a son they don't have any of their and own treated children. him like a son absolutely and this is what some sons do and when you mentioned earlier that there are only two family members not actively looking it's it's yeah. Will's brother and Will's son I mean and and his brother's son Will's nephew so his brother and his nephew are the only two They've not ever participated in any of our public search efforts. Uh, they've never come forward and had any communication, and they retain legal representation immediately after Will went missing. That says a lot. It's all public knowledge. It's Absolutely, all and, it says, and it says a lot. So I am really grateful that Carrie Hewitt came to do my podcast. I feel very honored that she is here. And if you know anything and you want to send us a tip, we would love to read it. And more cowbell. And remember, if you have any tip on the Will Serzon case or anything else, drop us a line at jttipsters at gmail.com.